Hi guys and welcome along to another episode of the Solihull Moors Career Mode series here on FIFA 20 and if you missed the end of the last episode you'll have also missed out on the big news Alistair McCutcheon and Omar Duhu are going out of the door or it certainly seems that way Bayern with a £95 million bid on Duhu and £85 million on the board for Alistair McCutcheon I can't say no to that kind of money let's get those deals through the door and see who we can find to replace them. So now the sooner have we said that, here are the notifications. Both those guys are out the door. Doohoo's transfer nets us £83 million into the transfer budget. And McCutcheon's deal, as he heads to Real Madrid, nets us £74 million into the transfer budget. So we have a massive amount of money to play with. Let me show you what I have planned. Right guys, so the first person that came to mind in terms of players from the Midlands that could elevate our team going forward was James Madison but he he is out at Atletico Madrid at the moment and I don't think that's really the type of deal that we want to get done purely on the basis that you know he wouldn't come to a club like Solihull Moors based on the fact that Atletico are actually in a better position than us at this present moment in time so it could be somebody we look to uh, bring in later down the line especially as he's got such a fantastic overall but for the time being we'll move on to Brendan Rafferty who as you know is one of our ex-players I didn't want to let him go uh, when we did let him go to Norwich in the first place we did bag 20 million pounds and obviously that helped our growth in those early stages as we progressed through the leagues but I've wanted to bring him back to the club for such a long time he's now worth somewhere around about 65 million pounds though so he will be a massive chunk of our, out of our transfer budget if we do decide to go for him i might not go for him in this window because we've still got nystrom bang in form and we've got widrington as backup Ince though has been put on the transfer list and then obviously that would leave us with smithy as the third player in that lineup but then here's the man that i really do want to get a deal over the line for i tried in the last window and obviously he went out to Ral sociedad before i could get the deal done so I will try to sign Jack Grealish in this window and hopefully we can bring him back to the Midlands and steal him away from that sun and sangria. Next up we've got Adama Traore and the reason he's on this list is for one reason only, pace. We know what happened to us in that Watford game. It's a major contributing factor to how you play in FIFA these days and a Traore has got bags and bags of pace so he is a consideration but we do have a lot of wingers already so you know I will potentially look to buy him this window but um, he's at the bottom of the list let's say of the players that I have my eye on to get this window next up we got Morgan Gibbs White 83 overall would put him as one of our best central midfielders so you know, he would improve the lineup dramatically and he, he isn't actually a great deal in terms of cost. We'd have to pay somewhere between 24 and 41 million pounds according to his evaluation at the moment. So it is somebody that I am tempted to get in just purely to improve the overalls, especially for when we're doing simulated games. Next up, having lost Doohu, I looked down in the lower divisions because I figured, well, we came from the, the National League ourselves. Is there any extra players down there that might do us a job here in the Premier League and also then filter some money back down the league system towards the National League? And the first person that came up here is Billy Wilson, uh, left back for Stockport County. He's an 83 overall and he's only 24 at this stage, six foot six, and looks like we can get him 
for less than what uh, obviously the deal was for Doohu. So he is potentially uh, a decent purchase for us if we can get a deal done with Stockport. Then again, Bradley Green from Barnet is an 83 rated cam or centre forward. I'm not really particularly looking for anybody in that position though because of the potential to buy Jack Grealish. But if we were to see the Grealish deal fall through, this is my backup plan and obviously would cost us a little bit more than Jack Grealish because of his age. Right, this guy, Daniel Alley, 22 years of age, 81 overall, played well against us both times that we've played against the Villa this season. I think we've played them twice. And the kicker is, and I didn't realise this until I put him on the shortlist, he's a Swede. And obviously we know uh, the connection that we've got with Swedish players here. And uh, I, I really think that he could be somebody that we could bring in to, to help bolster our striking options. So I'm going to keep him as an open option depending on how things go and how much money I've got left after doing all the deals we're looking to do. Next up, we've got a man who used to play for Derby County, so that's the reason he's here on this list. Uh, he's currently play, playing his tried at, trade at Villarreal. Uh, Left-footed, right midfielder, can play cam and centre mid. Uh, has been a player that I have gone to in previous career mode series and somebody who I think could, again, do us a solid Depends on what happens with Gibbs White and how the rest of the transfer deals unfold, but he's a man that I've got my eye on. Next up, we've got Marcus Roberts, again down in the National League, this time with Harrogate Town. Can play centre mid or central defensive midfield and has 81 overall. Really considering him, but he is 28, so again, that might play into my thinking. This guy is really interesting to me, Johnny Garrett. 18 years of age, so he's a regen of some sort. Uh, Left-footed, the only thing that I've got a problem with perhaps is the skill moves and weak foot. So I may, if I purchase him, increase those skill moves to a two or a three rated. But let me know in the comment section what you think of that because I don't want to be making things um, up on my own. Uh, I want you guys' feedback on whether I make too many adjustments going forward but he has some fantastic ratings uh, and some traits as well so he could be a, a, a really good fit for us and obviously that means money will be filtered back down to the National League as well. Next up we've got another guy that I've do, done with career modes in the past, Rico Henry, currently at Crystal Palace here in the save, previously of Brentford and prior to that he was a Warsaw player and that's why I know him because obviously I've done Warsaw careers in the past. He would be a good replacement for Duhu, 27 years of age, a very good attacking left back. So I'm really interested in maybe bringing Rico into the lineup at Solihull. And then last but not least, uh, I did forget about this guy if I'm being honest because he's 80 rated and he's at the bottom of the list. But Harvey Morris at Eastleigh. Centre back, centre mid, right back, very versatile player, left footed, four star weak foot. This guy could be a very, very interesting player indeed. Uh, I am tempted to buy him just purely because of the versatility that he appears to have. But he is 29 years of age as well, so that does obviously come into the fact that you know he's at the latter end of his career. He might be starting to lose his ratings. Uh, quite quickly based on the way that uh, EA's algorithm works. So there, those are the guys that I'm looking to buy. Transfer window deadline is in a couple of days time. I'll come back to you and let you know who I've got once the deals are all done. Okay, so the three biggest transfers of this window are all Solly Hallmore's players. Yes, I know Rafferty moved to Norwich for 20 million quid, but he has now gone to Manchester United for 90 million pounds. The chances of us being able to wrestle him back away from Manchester United next season are now looking much slimmer than they were when he was at Norwich. But we will try. I do really want to bring him back at some point, hopefully just in time to get into the squad for the Champions League final. 
Right, so the first game of this episode is a home game at Moorlands Park and we're going to face off against Everton in a simulated game. They don't have the greatest of records at the moment, having just lost 3-0 to Arsenal and only had a draw against Southampton. They're playing in a 4-4-2 formation and they've got a striker out left side midfield by the looks of it, or at least an attacking player out left side midfield. A lot of our new signings in this lineup here. Let's hope that we can get a really decent result at home and really impress the fans. But it is Everton who have the first opportunity of the game and they have missed the penalty. Not much more action here. It is looking like slim at pickings, but McDonnell comes up clutch once more, getting himself a goal in the 71st minute, and that is enough to get us the victory we needed. Let's go, boys. OK then, here we go, a trip to Old Trafford for the first time out with us playing with the new lineup. Grealish is going to face off in the left wing position, Henry at left back, Wilson at right back, Morris at centre back and Garrett out wide right and take a look at the stacked lineup that Manchester United have. Tillemans returns from that injury that left him out last time, as does Lamar and I can imagine this is going to be quite a challenge. Comes forward with it, flicks it off for McDonnell, through ball here for Nystrom, he's gone again though, I can't squeeze it past De Gea. He gets up well, into the box comes Manchester United, Lamar gets the shot away, but that's easy for Thomas. Wilson has seen the run. Nystrom can't quite squeeze it past De Gea. A great breakaway piece of play again though by Solly Ulmors. Well held up by Cody, gets it across to Jack Grealish, takes it left footed, it's a tame effort though there from the ex-villain. Sends Jack Grealish down that line. He's managed to get inside, rolls his man. Oh, and he can't squeeze the shot past the defender. Nico Henry with a lovely ball round the back to find Jack Grealish. Comes into the box. They're all trying to take him out. He gets the shot away and it's another tame one from Jack. Inside ball again for Jack. He's managed to get past the defender. Picks his pass but can't find Rico Henry who's in a very advanced position there. It's Solihull who come away with it again. Lovely interchange play. Donald, that's a penalty ref. That is a penalty ref. Unbelievable. The fourth official has indicated Tyler drives forward. Made the space. Takes the shot. Smashes it home. 1 0 Solihull Moors right on the half time break. Keen, good bit of close control there, and he's managed to find his way through. And Manchester United level it up early into the second half. Moise Keen on the score sheet, and we only have ourselves to blame really for that one. A poor piece of defensive play. Nice ball round the corner to find McDonnell, and it's through to Taylor. Rolls fortuitously out to the feet of Jack Greal issues. Jinking and driving, trying to find his man. He does pick out McDonnell who fires it through. Oh, and Nystrom just fires wide. And here he comes, Brendan Rafferty. Making an appearance here for Manchester United. Dalton's missed a clear opportunity there. Well done, Jack. And he sends it through for Nystrom. He ain't missing it. He ain't missing it. And that is fabulous work there from the boys. And Jack Grealish with an absolutely stunning pass 
to pick out his Swedish teammate. Super work. And we go 2 1 up at a crucial point in the game. By Drew Bellingham, who's just come into the field of play. McDonald will push this away. Looks inside to find Bellingham, who's made that darting run. And feeds it through to Nyström. Tries the chip, but De Gea had stood up well. And ref. Oh, what a goal <laughs> by Wilson, who's just got forward and stuck his head on that. That is an absolutely brilliant header and the home fans are booing their team and the Solihull Moor fans are going bananas. What a header. Top bins. Stunning victory, lads. Manchester United were third in the league. That is a big scalp, and you can tell why the fans are not happy at Old Trafford. They've just been beaten by a team that shouldn't have stood a chance. OK, so here we go. Crystal Palace head to Moorlands Park as they face off against us whilst we're in an absolutely amazing run of form. The new signings appear to have really reshaped the lineup. I have brought Patterson into the lineup today, though, instead of Connor Cody. And Demiri Gray is out wide left whilst Jack Grealish drops into a Dalton's role. Meanwhile, over on the Crystal Palace lineup, their team, I had to do a huge amount of shuffling because they had a very weakened lineup compared to what you see there on the screen now. But let's see how they can get on against us in this last game of the episode. I don't know if he's onside. No, flags up. That would have been an amazing opening phase to the game. Electric football there as we try to unlock Crystal Palace straight away. Garrett's not a bad effort. Patterson back in and Morris has it. Oh, not a bad effort. But Massif is able to get a glove on it. Oh, that is amazing football. And Jack Grealish is clear. And he slides it into the post. But Nystrom's there to pounce. And Solihull get their first goal here at home. Oh. How late was that flag. Nice play by Burnett. Crystal Palace with their first real decent attack of the half. Sends it to the back post, Wilson gets there and Garrett gets it clear. As Taylor tries to drive it away. Mayer sitting in deep, picks up the ball. Almedia down the right hand side. Nobody really ahead of him. Gray sends that up over the top for Rico Henry to chase. Uses his pace against his former club here. Man on the edge is Jack Grealish arriving and he skews the shot wide. I was not expecting that from Garrett. It's a corner from Bjorn Nystrom. He doesn't usually take them. He went out to that right-hand side. Throws one into the box. And Garrett comes up with that header. Lovely, lovely finish. 1-0. And I don't know where all this extra time has come from from the referee. But thank you very much. The 
lovely ball around the corner. Chip back in. McDonnell. What a goal. <laughs> Another goal for this man. He's a central defensive midfielder, lads. And look how many goals he gets. He loves to get forward. And that is a great piece of play, play by Jack Grealish just to not knock it back into the danger zone. And McDonald's there coming up clutch once more and gets a really good header on it. Lovely football and Jack's through. Driving through the heart. Looks across to find Nystrom and it's a really tame effort there from Bjorn. Had so much time and didn't take it. Up to their passing game this half it seems. Crystal Palace and that is a thunderbolt. Where did that come from? And out of nowhere Crystal Palace suddenly looking quite dangerous. What a ball, what a ball. And Xerxes has smashed that against the bar. That is a warning shot across the bow to us. Ball inside. We've survived one there, lads. Crystal Palace coming into this game in the second half. Late. Tommy's away. And he can't get past the defender. Tried to overthink it there. Should have drove at the heart of the goal, but we've got the result we needed. It's a 2 1 victory here against Crystal Palace, and we continue with the momentum that we had in the last episode. Hi, can you chat to us for a second about the match? Well, what an episode. Five absolutely fantastic signings. Yes, we've lost two of the players that we brought through from the Youth Academy on the way towards the Premier League, but there weren't players that I actually felt had that little something on the ball. I don't know how to explain it, but neither of them really, to me, actually felt that great on the ball. And I feel like we've really replaced them well. We've used that money to devastating effect to improve lots of areas around the field. And I think the three results that we've just seen go to show that. So I hope you've enjoyed that episode. If you have, don't forget to smash the like button and also subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. But for now, I'm out of here. That'll be all. Thanks very much.